And you want to talk about a stacked lineup for the first of tonight's four TQ Midget Heat Races sponsored by E. Schneider & Sons Recycling. Check this out. Your pole sitter is Tyler Lindsay with the 46. Outside the front row, the straight shooter, Scott Kruder in the 49. Fast timer earlier today, Trevor Cantalano with the 56. We'll share row two with last night's third place finisher, Kyle Lick with the number eight. Then it's the seven of Tyler Ferris, the 38 CT of Nick Latica. In row number three, row four, Matt Roselli in the 98, Andrew Knight driving Jonathan Reed's number nine. And then your final row had a top ten last night, Ryan Bartlett with the number 93, and outside is Greg Martin's number 25. First TQ Midget Heat of the Night, Steve, and we're just about ready to rock and roll. Yes, we are. Ten cars, or ten laps the distance, ten cars. Going to give them a lap or two just to get... Make sure that the track is in good shape after the fan fest, get everything blown off from the racing surface, and then we'll get set for this first heat race for the TQs here on Future Homes Night. We are at the PPL Center, the Ironton Global Indoor Race. Yellow flag is back out now, and we are set to go here. Again, Paul, as you documented, top four cars qualify, 10 laps the distance. You do not want to be in those B mains. Trevor Catalano was your quick time earlier today. He starts in the third spot. The youngster, young Catalano racer, in that third spot. Right alongside of him, Kyle Lick, a third place run here last night. Here we go. Field is set into turn number three. Lights are out. A yellow flag. No start. No start. No start. Something didn't look right. We got some debris or something off in turn number two. As we need to get the cone set over in turn number two. So... Wanted to make sure that everything is in perfect shape. Warren Alston, our flagger, got word something wasn't right and brought the field back under caution. Now we get the signal, one to go. Next time by we go on that front row, the young kid Tyler Lindsay. What a racer he is. And right alongside one of the best in the business, the straight shooter, Scott Kruder. Track caution lights are out. Field is set into turn number three. Off turn number four, green lights are on. Lindsay gets a run there. Kruder gets a shot in the keister from Kyle Lick. Able to hang on to that. Number two spot. Lick drops into the third spot now. Trevor Catalano runs in fourth. Tyler Ferris down on the low side. Ferris gets a run. Dives on the inside. Trevor Catalano trying to hang on to a qualifying spot. Catalano, if he finishes in the top four, will keep his spot in the redraw. If he does not stay in the top four and transfer in. He loses his spot in the redraw. So Trevor Catalano, a lot on the line running in the fourth spot, and he has now settled into that spot. Tyler Lindsay is the race leader. Halfway down, halfway to go. Kyle Lick dials up the inside lane. Lick makes a run on the inside of Scott Kruder. Takes over that second spot. Kruder is in third. Trevor Catalano is fourth. Fifth spot, Tyler Ferris. Sixth spot, Nick Latiga. Seventh spot, Eight spot Matt Roselli, but up at the front of the field, Tyler Lindsay holding a pretty wheel as he sets the pace. Oh, Kyle Lick jumps the inside of the track, one of the tires. Keeps that car pointed in the right direction. This time by the white flag is out. One more trip around the racetrack. Tyler Lindsay into turn number three. Tyler Lindsay off turn number four. Tyler Lindsay gets the win. Kyle Lick in the second spot. Scott Kruder goes third. And Trevor Catalano, your quick time driver, Trevor Catalano hangs on to the fourth spot. So Trevor Catalano and uh, Tyler Lindsay will both make it into the redraw a little bit later on. Paul, heat race number one is in the books. Who do we have in heat race number two? Well, those cars just starting to roll their way out of the pit area. The lineup for this one, the orange number 48, Matt Janish sporting some uh, new colors for that Belfort Property Services sponsored car. He will come from the pole. The car number is 21. We call it number 89. That is uh, Matt Swanson who will be outside row number one. Row two on the inside, guy that was fast timer yesterday here, and that is Andy J. Andy Jan Kowiak. And then outside of him, driver who, like many, was the victim of somebody else's misfortune last night, Billy Pounce Jr. in the number 98 team or 98P machine. Then row three on the inside, the winner of the little 500 for non-wing sprint cars at Anderson Speedway in Indiana in May. That's Jake Trainer's 59. Outside the 43 is Ryan Smith. 
Kyle Herb, I remember him when he was running in the slingshots. Well, he's up here running in the TQs now with the 24. Tyler Catalano, 64 PJ outside. Your final row, row number five, will be Joe Toth with the 7-Eleven. He's got a couple of great sportsman championships under his belt in the summer. And John Barnett driving the number 33C. Ten laps the distance. Top four cars qualify for the A-Main. And both the heat winner and fast timer of the cars in this second heat will move on to the redraw. If the fast timer wins the heat, then only one car goes to the redraw. Now we are ready to hit the VP Racing Fuel start zone. Green flag in the air. Down through turns one and two. Janish going toe to toe with Swanson. Gets a better line off turn number four as Jankowiak will have to settle in behind Swanson for the number three spot. And it looks like Billy Pounce Jr. moving into the fourth position with Ryan Smith back there in fifth. Sparks flying from one of the cars a little bit further back in the field as the top three accordion up and go nose to tail through the turns and fan out a little bit on the straightaways as we work toward the completion of lap number four. And now trouble for one of the Catalano cars pulling in, or actually that will be the number uh, 33 machine of uh, Barnett pulling to the infield. So unfortunately, he'll be out of the running as we come around to complete lap six. It is Janish followed by Swanson, then Jan Koyak. And uh, we've got a caution waving for the first time here at our TQ Midget Heat Races tonight presented by E. Schneider and Sons. And it looks like the uh, car in trouble may be the Latiga. Let's see, the, it's either Herb or Latiga. It was Latiga's 38 car that came to a stop in turn four. So that will double the field back up here for a restart with four laps left to go. Jenish elects the inside lane as we get ready to come to the VP Racing Fuels restart zone with four to go. Green back in the air. Good launch again for Swanson on the outside. And he may clear going into turn number three and does. Swanson with a nice move on the restart. Takes over the race lead, dropping Janish to second. One car just gets bounced off another's wheel and lands up there in turn number two. And that brings out the caution here with seven laps complete. little bit of unscheduled airtime. For Kyle Herbs, 24. And quick look at what happened here as we get ready to go back to green in a moment. There's that shot that he took. Meanwhile, Swanson on the restart will take his shot at the front of the field as they scramble down to the two-to-go signal. Janish being worked over by Jim Koyak. Pouch Jr. in the number four spot, but here comes Trainer. Trainer trying to train the outside lane. Works his way up into the number five spot, perhaps. Does he have enough time to get to a transfer? They'll come off four. Swanson wins. Second spot to Janish Jan Koyak third. Pouch hangs on for that fourth and final transfer spot. A little bit too little too late on the top lane for trainer. He, Ryan Smith, and the rest of the field will have to go back to one of the two B mains coming up later on this evening. All right, third qualifying heat here for the TQs rolling off. 98T, Tyler Thompson shares row one with Anthony, Anthony Cecily's 44. Row two, Ryan Flores in the 15, Joey Bailey in the 1B. Row three, Tim Buckwalter, runner-up last night with the 74 and the 34 and a half of Derek Robbie. Lockport, Lum, and Bobby Holmes with the 8. Anthony Payne with the 45. Jimmy Zacharias and the Allentown Assassin. Briggs Stanner complete the field. Yes, indeed. Field is set into turn number three. It's Tyler Thompson and Anthony Cecily. Ryan Flores in the third spot. Joey Bailey in the fourth spot. Timmy Buckwalter in fifth. Man, what a top five this is. They could go anywhere in the country in any car and win a race. Right now, Anthony Cecily gets the upper hand on the high side. You're defending champ and you're defending Allentown winner. Cecily sets the pace. Tyler Thompson runs in second spot. Ryan Flores is third. Yellow flag is out. 
We got one the wrong way around down here. Bobby Holmes the wrong way around down here in turn number two. Holmes in that red number eight car. Got it crossed up for him down here in turn number two. We're under caution. And Holmes able to pull that car back away. At the front of the field, Anthony Cecily had an absolutely horrific night last night. Brutal night last night. Didn't even transfer out of his heat race. Had to win the B main. Here he is leading this heat race, trying to go into the redraw on this one. So Cecily trying to win the race, but he's got that youngster from Fulton, New York, Tyler Thompson right alongside. Also keep an eye on that battle for the third, fourth, and fifth spot. Flores has third. Joey Bailey has fourth, but Timmy Buckwalder wants to take fourth. Fourth is the final transfer spot. So four cars to qualify. Here we go. Field is set into turn number three. Side by side. Cecily keeping a slow pace. Now he passes it up. Anthony Cecily down on the low side. Tyler Thompson up high. There's Ryan Flores. Here comes Timmy B. Timmy Buckwalder trying to find some racing room to get up into the top four. Flores into the third spot. Thompson massaging that back bumper on Anthony Cecily's car. And Cecily loops it. Thompson saves it for him as Cecily gets up the racetrack. Tyler Thompson and Cecily bounce off each other. What a race this is. New race leader, Tyler Thompson. He goes up and over. Tyler Thompson pirouetting into turn number three. Ay, ay, ay. Red flag is out. Thompson's coming out of that race car in a hurry. Holy cow, mixing it up at the front of the field. Tyler Thompson and Anthony Cecily, and they got together, and it went bad, and it went bad in a big way, and it went bad in a hurry. Tyler was looked like he was coming out of the race car. Now he's sitting in the car to see how much damage there is on it. You're kidding me. The front end, the suspension looks fine on the race car. Oh my gosh. The wall is tore up. Tyler Thompson's putting the steering wheel back on his race car. I think he's gonna roll this thing off. He is gonna roll this car off. Tyler Thompson, now they might be pushing it. Well, no, he's getting ready. He's getting ready to go back racing. They've destroyed the wall. You know what they say? Race car, nothing, concrete wall one. We have a new all-time win here. The race car and the driver beat the wall. Oh my gosh, never have seen that happen before. The wall took the hit. The race car and driver is good. Let's take a look at that replay because this was a thriller, wow. They got together right here off turn two, and Thompson was able to save the car for Cecily, but that put him side by side. And now watch this. Whoop! Aye, aye, aye. We've got another replay on it, but attention is also on the Anthony Cecily car here on the front stretch, too. So we have another angle. Anthony Cecily, and one of the things Anthony was telling me, I gotta see what he's talking about, is he could not see the right front of his race car, and they're pushing that car off. We're gonna check on that. We're going to get a call on Anthony Cecily on whether he'll be able to continue or where he'll be at. He needs a push. Anthony Cecily needs a push. Get that car started. He's going to try to get it refired and restarted. But I don't know. That car took a big hit. We'll have to see how this one fares. Here comes the push vehicle. Don't roll that thing. There it is, they're gonna put a card on him. Anthony Cecily, what a bad pair of nights here in Allentown. They're gonna put him on the skids. Anthony Cecily, done for this heat race. Oh my gosh, two nights in a row. If you had Anthony Cecily going to the B main two nights in a row, you could have taken that one to Vegas and cashed in big.
They're taking it to Atlantic City and cashed in big as well. Anthony Cecily knows about cashing in big at Atlantic City for sure. Damage on that race car and Anthony Cecily's out of it. That puts Ryan Flores and Flores, one of the little nuances of this is, Florence is the, uh, Flores is the quick time driver from this heat race. And if he were to go ahead and win this heat race, he would be the only driver in the redraw, meaning the redraw would go to seven. Timmy Buckwalder, you gotta watch that KG veteran on the high side. Timmy Buckwalder would like to get into that redraw and he's working on Flores. Joey Bailey gets together with Derek Robbie. Robbie is in there. Anthony Payne is in there mixing it up. Bobby Holmes trying to take that fourth and final transfer spot. Four cars to qualify. They're side by side for four spot. Joey Bailey finally gets it. Holmes jumps his wheel. He goes up the racetrack. Anthony Payne is there off the back bumper of Joey Bailey. Up at the front of the field, the white flag is out for Ryan Flores. Flores sets that car down into turn number one. Off turn number two, Ryan Flores going to get the win. Timmy Buckwell is going to be second spot. Derek Robbie going to qualify into the A-Main third. Joey Bailey going to be fourth. And again, that makes the draw for the top spots a seven-car draw because Ryan Flores was quick time in that heat race. So it will only be seven cars in the draw right now because Flores will be the only car out of this heat to make the draw. Ryan Flores picks up the win. What a thriller that one, Paul, was. A lot of action at the front of the field. And we get ready now for our final E. Schneider and Suds Recycling qualifying heat for the TQ Midgets on the pole. Lost the motor in this car last night. Called back up to Watertown, New York. Said, hey, we need a fresh motor down here. One was shipped down this morning. And Matt Caprera will start on the pole with that brand new motor in the number 11 car. And alongside is the number 51. That is Sean Nye. Earlier tonight, we introduced you to the quartet of Catalanos that are racing tonight. Two of them are in this heat. Uh, Pete, uh, Tommy Catalano is in the red number 54 inside row two. Outside is Chad Jones with the 28. Uh, back at row three, Steve Kemery with the 69K. And Timmy Catalano with a 45 PJ. Then your final three competitors, Ryan Tidman, uh, Chase Cabre with the FX1, a team car to Matt Capura's car, and Chris Hurt with the number 78. And again, the top four do earn spots in the feature, but the question is, how many will go to the redraw? So the field stacked up here on the back stretch as we get ready to go. 10 laps the distance. They'll come off turn number four. Green flag waves. Riggs Danner, the Allentown assassin, trying to dig his way through the field early as the race lead will go to Caprera. Nye in second, and Tommy Catalano in third. Kemery right now on the bubble here in the early going in that final transfer spot. And there's trouble with one car down here on the inside of the backstretch, losing fire. And that will be the other Catalano car. That is Timmy Catalano's number 45, bringing the yellow flag out here with two laps completed. And it looks like Chad Jones having an issue with the number 28 car as he is stopped dead center here in the middle of the front stretch. Meanwhile, the uh, Catalano number 45 car is headed off the racetrack. Steve, I don't know if you had a uh, chance to see what might have gone wrong with that Catalano car. I believe it might have been something under the hood. At least that's where they were focusing the attention. And he was the car that blew up yesterday. So that was a borrowed motor on the car. So Catalano's done for this heat race. Chad Jones down here in turn number one was stopped. He was asking for a push. And just as the push vehicle got there, that car was able to fire back off. So Chad Jones going to join at the tail of the field. Not so much for young Timmy Catalano as he is behind the wall and out of this heat race. Two laps complete as we get ready to go back to Grady. Keep an eye on that green and silver ghost machine of Briggs Danner, the Allentown Assassin, still back in the number seven spot, trying to get an A-Main transfer after a disastrous day yesterday. 
Back under Green, Cabrera will take the lead. Battle on for the number two spot. Catalano in nine and give it to Catalano in the 54. He slides through into that number two position. Spinner in turns one and two. And once again, we will have to go yellow. Chris Hurt hurting his chances of transferring here with a spin that will send him to the back of the field. And again, the pace slowed here by the caution, this time with three laps complete. But if you take a look here, that number five position, I believe, or just right there on the cusp of it, there is Danner right now. Kemery is one out of a transfer spot. We get ready for the restart here in the VP restart zone. Green flag back up, and again, Matt Caprera and Catalano jump out to the advantage. Now the battle is on for third, fourth, and fifth, and Danner gets the number four spot, almost a crossover, but it's all for naught. Yellow flag waves again, another spin for Chris Hertz, number 38, just as things were getting very complicated for that final transfer position. And it looks like the uh, Chase Cabre number one X pulled off the track, or the FX one, I should say. So they'll go ahead and clear that car to the pit area while we're under the caution flag here on lap number three. Ryan Tidman right now, he's the driver on the hot seat in that final transfer spot. So we'll give Ryan a shout out here as he gets ready for a restart. Single file this time with two yellows on the same lap. And that allows Capurra to open up a little bit of breathing room. But here comes Catalano closing in from the number two spot as they work back down through turns one and two. And Catalano takes a sniff down to the inside. Coming off turn number two. Tries again here off turn number four at the halfway point. Danner, meanwhile, cannot find his way by Kemery. But Catalano... Well... Just when things were getting a little bit interesting, we had to uh, throw the yellow flag to relocate some tires. Uh, business is definitely picking up here at the front of the field. Cabrera and Catalano going back and forth for the top spot. And then Nye, Tidman, Kemery, and behind them, Danner still looking to move up. And now trouble for the 11 of Matt Cabrera. Flat left front tire. I think Steve's going to go down and get a close-up look at what happened to this car. The tire on the uh, Matt Caprera car has been a rough heat race for the FX Caprera team as Chase Cabry has taken his car back to the pit area. And this left front flat, Matt was trying to make the car work, but it just wouldn't. I think he was actually all right. I think he was all right when we were under green. I think it was parading around under caution when more of the car loaded down on that left front is where the problem is. So tough break for the leader, Matt Caprera, as he is out of it here in heat race number four. Now that puts Stephen Kemery back in the transfer spot, and Danner now just one spot away from a transfer. Your leader on the outside is Catalano with the 54, so he sets the pace here to the VP restart zone. Gets ahead of nine, and here comes Danner with an inside look, and Danner is into a transfer spot. The Allentown Assassin taking over the number four position, chasing down Tidman as they go into three and four, closed in quickly enough to get a tag. And we have the caution flag out again. Another spin, unfortunately, for Chris Hurt with the number 78 car. And for Chris, I believe, uh, we'll wait for race control to make the make a decision here. And Steve, we've got a customer coming to the J.R. Mahalski heating and cooling cool down zone. Oh, boy. The J.R. Mahalski heating and air conditioning cool down zone. Chad Jones is in trouble. He's in the timeout. Get out of here. Don't come back. Don't ever come back to the zone. Behave yourself out there, Chad Jones. Behave yourself. Don't come back to the J.R. Mahalski heating and air conditioning cool down zone. Green flag back in the air. A little less than two laps to go when they come by this time. 
Danner on the outside of Ryan Tidman is battling for that number three spot. Nye trying to peek on the inside of Catalano as they will come to a caution flag. And Hurt with the 78 will be excluded from the remainder of the race. So we've got Catalano electing the inside this time. Leader has that lane choice for a restart. Followed by Nye, Tidman, Danner, Kemery, and Jones. Two laps is going to settle it. Four of these six drivers are going to go to the A main. But only four. All right, here we go one more time. Green, white, checker. If we do it right, and Catalano does the start right. Danner dive bombs the inside, gets into nice left rear coming off turn two. Tucks back in line now as the white flag waves. Back through turns one and two comes Tommy Catalano, and he's going to bring it around for the heat race win. Nye is going to finish in second. Danner will get the transfer with a third place finish for that beautiful shiny Ironton Global number 48 car and Ryan Tidman getting a great run here consistent in this heat race takes the fourth and final transfer position. Well once again the TQs will be in the spotlight. Speaking of TQs here comes the first of our B mains for the TQs. Each of these 12 laps, top three, will move on to tonight's 40-lap A feature event. You see all the crew members coming across with dollies. Sometimes they'll have tires or uh, whatever tools they can hand carry into that Hoosier Corral that is down there in the infield. A car can come down into the infield and be worked on by the crew. You'll see that as a very, very busy spot, especially in the features later on for not just the TQs, but the other divisions as well. Here's a lineup for our first TQB main, Tyler Ferris with the seven and the Matt Swanson 21. They're gonna be row one, row two, Nick Latiga's 38 CT, Jake Trainer with the 59, then Andrew Nye driving the number nine in relief of Jonathan Reed, uh, the 711, Joe Toth, or Joe Toth, then uh, Matt Roselli and Tyler Catalano. Roselli in the 98, Catalano in the 64. They are back in row four. Row five, Ryan Bartlett with the 93 and the 24 of Kyle Herb. And then it's Greg Mountain, Martin and John Barnett as we get ready to go in our first TQ B main. Three cars to qualify. Here we go on the high side. Matt Swanson, Tyler Ferris is down low. Jake the trainer on the high side. Nick Latica runs into third. Whoa, we got one the wrong way around. It crossed ends on him. Kyle Hervé. Tyler Ferris is your race leader. Matt Swanson is second. Nick Latica, he's a fascinating character from over in the state of Connecticut. He's at number 38. Latica in the third spot. Runs NHRA drag racing group one. He's got a Pontiac GTO that'll really gas it up. But he hung on to this TQ car because he loves his indoor auto racing. Right now, Latica is in that third and final transfer spot. Jake Trainer, the little 500 winner in the Lusaconi number 59 car, is going to spin out of the money. Tyler Ferris is the race leader. Latica now gets a good run to the low side of Swanson. With Latica. Oh, Swanson jumps the wheel. He goes flying through the air. And Jake Trainer, Trainer in the Sacconi 59, takes the spot. He's under fire. Tyler Catalano. Tyler Catalano now takes the final transfer spot. Tyler Catalano, the number 64, works to the low side, getting that final transfer spot. We'll see what happens. It's a half way down, half way to go in this 12 lapper. Tyler Ferris is under fire. Nick Latica is working to the low side. Catalano oh, Ferris slams the door. Catalano gets a run. Down into turns three and four. Tyler Catalano is a man on a mission right now, not 64. Tyler Ferris hanging on to that final transfer spot. Matt Swanson knocking on the door. Ryan Bartlett is back there. Jake Trigger is back there out of the money right now. Watch this battle for third. Two laps to go. Swanson gets to the back bumper of Ferris. Ferris returns the favor down into one and two. Around those 
Chris Watson, yellow flag, so it's not a finish. It was a battle back and forth. And we have got the number seven of Tyler Ferris has been invited to the J.R. Mahalski cool down zone. Matt Swanson and him battling. Ferris has stopped down here on the inside of turn number three. Tough, tough break for Ferris. Tough, tough break for Swanson. There goes Andy Nye in the Reed's number nine car back. Let's take a look at the replay and see how that all played out. They were beating and banging off each other. They did it multiple times, and they finally got it for good. As Ferris and Swanson got together. In the 98, I got my Matt Roselli foam finger right here. We'll see if Matt Roselli can make it in. Off to the floor. Green lights are back on. Green lights are Nick Latiga, Tyler Catalano. Off to number four, Nick Latiga is in. Tyler Catalano puts another Catalano car in the big show. He's in. And Ryan Bartlett, how about Ryan Bartlett, the racer out of Watertown, makes his way into the big show. So TQ B main number one is in the books. Right now, everybody's plan is make it to the big race. We are going green in our second B-Main. Cecily grabs the advantage off turn number two. A nice cut down to the inside here in turns three and four for the 45 of Anthony Payne. Puts him into second. Matt Caprera hanging on by a thread for the third spot. He's got both Thompson and Kemry knocking at the door. And now the yellow flag waves hurt who was having problems keeping out of the spin cycle in his qualifier, finds the spin cycle for the first time here in his B-Main event. One of 12 complete, Cecily. Oh, just had the car climb on the back of him. That was Caprera. Boy, is that going to cost Matt Caprera as he's going to lose at least two or three spots. That puts Thompson up into the final transfer spot. And now Thompson just hammering on the backside of Payne. And they were both pushing hard on the back bumper of Cecily, trying to get him going. Here comes the Lockport Lawman on the outside. That is Bobby Holmes with the number eight getting after it on the top lane. And things are getting crazy here at the front of the field as the whole field is jammed up and Cecily is in trouble. Cecily pulls the car into the infield and unfortunately he will not transfer into the A feature and we've still got all sorts of crazy stuff happening here and now a red flag. And they were battling I believe for the final transfer spot. Now they were back a little bit further than that. Oh boy, and it was uh, Matt Caprera and Chad Jones, and Jones went skyward, and there he goes, boom, into the fence. And here we go, we'll get the green this time as they run down into turns one and two. Everybody pushing out a little bit wide, they're off turn number two, and now another car drops off the pace. That's Chase with the FX1 headed down into the infield. Meanwhile, Matt Caprera, his teammate, in a dogfight with Kemery for the final transfer spot. And trying to do it the long way around is Caprera. Can he pull down to the inside off turn number four? He does. He clears Kemery after a stiff challenge as the race lead is held by the Tornado. Anthony Payne followed by the Lockport Lawn and Bobby Holmes with the number eight. So now Matt Caprera after blowing a motor up last night is possibly a couple laps away from starting in the A feature tonight as they head back down into turns three and four white flag will wave this time and for Anthony Payne it will be a B main victory courtesy of West End Equipment Sales second excuse me uh, courtesy of Aqueduct Water Transport second spot goes to Bobby Holmes and how about that for Matt Caprera hanging on through trials and tribulations to wind up getting a transfer spot into tonight's 40 lap A feature. Arlington Global Allentown indoor race is green. We have a race down into turn number three. Tommy Catalano sets the pace. Ryan Flores runs in second spot. Trevor Catalano runs third. Andy J runs in the fourth spot. Matt Janis runs in fifth as everybody makes their way cleanly through. Lap number three now, lap number two. 
Tommy Catalano setting a blistering pace. Andy J is under fire in that third spot. Trevor Catalano wants to get up there with his big brother. As we got one car on the back stretch the wrong way around, we got simple stop. The 45 of Anthony Payne is stopped on the back stretch, and we've got the 43 of Ryan Smith and Scott Cruder. Scruder stopped in turn number two, and he's taking the belts off. Scott Cruder's getting out of that race car. I think his night is over. Scott Cruder climbing out of that race car. What a frustrating turn of events for the straight shooter, Scott Cruder, as he is out of that race car. And Cruder just frustrated. He's headed back. He's walking it back to the garage area. Scott Cruder, Ryan Smith, and Anthony Payne all involved in this caution period. Payne's got his car fired back up. Payne's got his car fired back up. Here comes Nye into the pit area. Sean Nye has a left rear flat. Van Doren's up to seventh spot. Tanner Van Doren has gained three spots in the early on. Flag racing action. Tyler Catalano gets a quick shuffle. Now the battle for second spot. Tommy Catalano has the lead. Andy Jim Koyak down to the low side of Ryan Flores. Andy J and Ryan Flores, those two know each other well. Flores now he gets to the low side of Andy J. Ryan Flores gets to the low side of Andy J. The two drivers that got into it at the end of last night's feature are side by side battling for the second spot. Andy J now gets the upper hand on this one, yellow flag. We've got Derek Roby the wrong way around. Derek Roby's the wrong way around in turn number two. And so we are under caution. Derek Roby has that car fired back up. He got down into the tires. And now he's able to get that car refired and back out on the racetrack. Seven laps have been completed. Tommy Catalano, Andy Jen Koyak, Ryan Flores. Folks, I'm just going to be real honest with you. Andy J and Ryan Flores have not seen eye to eye on much over the last few years in indoor auto racing, including last night. And I would not be surprised if this race unfolds, they don't not see eye to eye again here. Andy J gonna start right alongside of Tommy Catalano. We'll see what happens. Track caution lights blinking, so we're gonna go one more lap. Next lap will go green. We'll see what Andy J can do on that outside if he can get a run on Tommy Catalano. Look at this, Tanner Van Doren's up to fourth. Tanner Van Doren started 10th. He's going for the $10,000 Ironton Auto Body bonus, and he is in fourth spot. Holy mackerel. Tanner Van Doren is there. Tommy Catalano passes it up, green lights are on. Catalano takes the advantage. Now here comes Ryan Flores down to the low side. Flores to the low side. Andy J. Koyak to the high side. They bounce off each other off turn number four. Flores gets the advantage by half a car length. Andy J. right there on the high side, not giving up. Tanner Van Doren, the best seat in the house for this one. Ryan Flores gets the advantage. Now he is looking at the back corner of Tommy Catalano. Catalano slides up the racetrack. As Ryan Flores is there, Tanner Van Doren gets to the low side of Andy J. Koyak. Tanner Van Doren to the low side. Now he gives Andy J a shot. Jim Koyak slides up the racetrack. They settle down that battle for second spot. Things hot and heavy for first yellow flag. We got problems. Turn one. Turn one, Nick Lanaga. Nick Lanaga is in trouble. Oh, the front end is all caved in on the Lanaga car. The Lanaga car is caved in on the front end. They're going to get that thing on the skids. It's got all kinds of damage on the front. Left rear or left front is just pushed in on that car. And I don't even think they're taking it to the work area. I think it's coming back to the I think it's coming back to the boneyard. The land of misfit toys. Yeah, crew's not even gonna there's nothing they can do on that one. Nick Lattiga, the drag racer from up in Connecticut. Made his way into the A feature as Nick Lattiga. Gets his car stood in the land, the, the land of misfit toys down here on the cars that are outside of the racetrack. And Nick Latiga going to climb out of that race car. Field getting set in double file formation. Going to get the one to go this time. One to go this time. This time it's Ryan Flores alongside 
of Tommy Catalano, but keep your eye on Tanner Van Doren. Boy, Kyle Lick having a good run. Lick is up to the sixth spot. Keep an eye on Kyle Lick as well as he's up to sixth spot. Tommy Catalano, this time Flores stays with him. Flores is able to stay with him on the high side. Catalano down on the low side. They're side by side. Tommy Catalano gets the advantage. And now, Andy Jankoyak going to try to slide into that hole on the low side. I don't think Flores has done up top. Now he's done up top. Challenging for the front spot. Andy Jankoyak goes to the low side. Him and Flores side by side. That's not the first time that's happened. I think they spent half their life side by side. Andy J gets the upper hand on that one. Now Tanner Van Doren looking at the back bumper of Ryan Flores. Tommy Catalano slipped a little bit, and Andy Jen Koyak made him pay the price. Andy Jen Koyak, it was one slip for Tommy Catalano off to number two. And Andy J got by. Now Catalano goes up, gives a little kiss to the back bumper of Andy J as they make their way around the speedway. Halfway down, halfway to go. Andy Jen Koyak, Tommy Catalano, Ryan Flores, Tanner Van Norton, and Matt Jada should top five. And now the leaders are going to start working into some lap traffic directly in front of them as they head down the backstretch. There's no room high or low for Andy J right now. He's got to be aggressively patient, try to get his way through the traffic, and at the same time, try to avoid leaving a door open for Catalano or Flores, who are hot on his heels, and the car spins right by the leaders. That's one of the Catalano cars going around here, bringing the yellow out on lap number 23. Wow, the leaders, I think, all held their breath going into turns one and two when they saw that car was inside out. And that is a break for Andy J that gets him out of a hornet's nest, but it puts everybody back up and bunched up for a side-by-side -side restart. We'll see if Jack Kowiak likes the inside lane or the outside lane for the restart. Let's take a look at that Dirt Track Digest.tv replay, and you'll see right there the snap spin. That was Tyler Catalano that went around. Let's reset for you. So Jankowiak leads. Tommy Catalano second. Flores third. Tanner Van Doren. Tyler Catalano's in the pit area. They're going to change a right rear tire. Sean Nye is down here. He's got a left rear flat. I don't know that they're able to fix that car. We've got Catalano down here. They're taking the tire off from that car, putting the right rear on. Catalano, Tyler Catalano makes it back out onto the speedway. So Tyler Catalano's back as we're getting ready to go green. And they hit the BP restart zone, and we are back underway here in Allentown. Three wide for the lead, going into turn number three, and Catalano comes out the other side with Flores in second place. Janish now fighting it out on the bottom lane, going into three and four. He's got Van Doren to his outside. Catalano will not quit, neither will Jack Kowiak. Jan Kowiak buzzes down to the inside, retakes the lead. Catalano goes bottom here in turn number two, getting up alongside Flores in a battle for the ages, and we've got trouble in turns three and four, bringing out the caution. That is Lindsay with the 46 and Joe Bailey with the number one that had contact. One spins around on the bottom, one spins around on the top. And if you didn't like that battle for the lead, you don't have a pulse. We go green with 13 laps left to go. And the battle begins again as they go into turns one and two. Jack Kowiak comes out off the inside lane with the lead. Flores switching up lanes now. Goes to the inside on Catalano in a battle for a second. Janish holds on to fourth. Fifth spot occupied by Van Doren. And then sixth spot is Kyle Lick. But at the front of the field, these two guys are ready to wage war here over the final 10 laps. It is Jan Kowiak and Flores, one and two, and Catalano staying step for step with them in the number three position. Zero mistakes at the front of the field is how you'll get the victory lane. Oh boy, and Flores trying to touch up the back bumper and Jan Kowiak trying to loosen him up a little bit to try to make a move for the win. 
Jan Koyak pulls away here by about a car length or two. Flores could be breathing the car for a lap or so before he gets another fresh run. Jan Koyak is looking ahead. There is traffic about half a straight away. Ahead is the back of the field, the tail end of the lead lap. This one's going to go down to the wire now with less than five laps left to go. Jan Koyak wants to keep Flores behind, but he doesn't want to get caught in this traffic either. And the yellow flag is going to save Jan Koyak again from getting into traffic. Oh, the tires got knocked off in turns one and two. I don't know if Andy J wanted to see a caution this late or not. Five laps left to go in this one. As we see one of the uh, Catalano cars heading back down into the work area down in the infield. Not the Tommy Catalano car, still holding on to third. We're going to double them up. We've got 36 in, four left to go. Will it be Andy J or Flying Ryan? Or could a Catalano wind up in victory lane? Critical restart. Green and Ryan Flores jumps to the outside. Now they're three wide again for the lead going into turn number three. Flores comes out the other side with the number one spot. The 54 of Catalano in second. Jack Koyak falls back to a battle for third with Van Dorn and they touch wheels as we get ready for the white flag to come up this time. Final lap, Catalano up on the back end of the Flores car. Flores gets away by about a car length. They'll roll down into turns three and four, and Ryan Flores wins one for the ages in Allentown. Catalano finishes second, followed by Jack Koyak, Van Doren, and I believe Matt Janish in the mix there as well, along with Danner, Lick, Cecily, and Payne, but... How about that three-way dance for the win? An absolutely wild and crazy finish. The lead changed hands more times than I have fingers or toes. Ryan, earlier today I saw you in the garage. He said, you're going to talk to me here tonight. You're going to talk to me here tonight. You had to know. You had to feel really good about it. You've had a fast race car all weekend long. Yeah, man. It's, you know, like indoor series gets a bad rep, but... Those, us three guys last night battled it out before there was some water on the track. We battled it out again tonight, and we was clean. You know, there's two lanes. Hey, baby. She picked number two, which was uh, which really helped us. But that, you know, when you race like that, and you're in front of these people, and there's a lot of people watching. There's a lot of kids here. That's what you want them to see. You know, not rooting and gouging, but we got to race pretty clean there, and there's two good lanes. And, man, Allentown, I love this place.